We now invite you to listen to the following lecture by Supreme Master Ching Hai, entitled, Heaven is Created by Your Own Inner Power, given on November 3rd, 1989, in New York, USA. Supreme Master Ching Hai's lectures are not a complete meditation instruction. Please do not try alone. For free of charge guidance, please visit www.godsdirectcontact.org or contact any of our centers near you. There's no great things about spending your own money. Is that not so? Everybody knows that. <laughs> Similarly, there's no great thing about discovering your own power and your own wisdom and use them for the benefit of yourself and for anyone who needs it. Apart from this discovery of your own wisdom and power, you are ordinary. You just added more power, that's all. Whatever other people do, you do. They sleep, you sleep, they eat, you eat, they walk, you walk. It's all right, you like before. You are just now extra charged by extra power. It is similar to the case of a medical student. After he has graduated from medical school, become an MD. Now, he didn't change anything, did he? Hmm? The outlook is the same, the friends are the same, his activities are the same, his behavior won't change. What changes is that he has extra knowledge, extra talent, extra abilities to help others, including his own and his family with his medical expertise. So, you see, people make Buddha become a very mythological figure, a very great deal being, a very mystical figure, and nobody can understand, nobody know, nobody can touch, nobody can see, and make Christ become the world owner, <laughs> yeah? And no one else can attain his level. This is wrong. This is incorrect information. Just because you have discovered your last treasure doesn't mean you will change anything in your habits and behavior. Yeah? You will not become a wooden statue or a stone Buddha. You will have similar feeling. You have the same power of reasoning. You still have the same capability to work in your job, if not better. You can serve the society with more power, more vigor, and more clear-sightedness, more concentration. And apart from your physical ability to contribute your talent to societies and the world at large, you have the invisible wisdom which can be manifested and used as power to supply blessing, upliftment, and joy to the people around you. So, for this reason, we can see that no one should deny enlightenment. No one should deny the right to our own wisdom and power. Now, the wisdom is something very intangible, invisible but it can be felt once you want to use it. Our engine ears, <laughs> engineer, you know engine ear? Yeah, <laughs> we call engineer, <laughs> I call him engine ear. <laughs> engineer, our engineer uh, friend just mentioned that electricity, we cannot see it, but we can feel it when we turn on the light. We can use it when it turns on the fan, or the television, or all the apparatus. So that's how we know electricity exists. Now, how do we know God, or wisdom, or Buddha nature exists? We do know by the manifestation of this power. We have discovered this power, and then we turn this power into use. We turn this wisdom into useful purpose, useful things. Just like electricity is invisible, but you can turn them into light, into the power of the record player, 
and using the refrigerator and the fan and all kind of useful things. Now, if we have this inborn wisdom, we can use it and make it into any things we want, including build our own heaven. We no need God even then, like the case of the Zen masters. In Buddhism, there are many branches of uh, practicing. Some are reciting the Buddha's name, yeah, they call it pure land sect, and some are believing in the power of reasoning and meditation, they call them Zen sect. Yeah? And those who master the Zen, we call Zen master. Huh? Now in case of these ancient Zen master, after they get enlightened, they spoke in such aloof terms, like there is no God, there is no one, and they call God like the old man sitting in front of my door, or the ancient man always coming and out in front of me, or there's the old one again, or they say, well, I'm just drinking tea, or something like that. They never express so much emotion about God or divine being. It is difficult to understand them, and we may sometimes mistakenly address them as atheists. But it is not so. Similar to the case of the Buddha, after he has been completely enlightened, <laughs> he even denied that there is any God. But he used another name, the Anuttara Samyak Sam Buddha. It means the highest Buddha. Now the highest Buddha or the highest God is similar things. But the highest Buddha or the highest God lives within us. That is a wonder of all wonder. That means what? Do you know? That means that we are God. We are Buddha. If the Buddha lives in here, who else then? <laughs> the owner is the Buddha. So we are the Buddha. We are God. <laughs> but it's easy to speak, to tell, to repeat. It's not easy to realize that. Therefore, we humbly or arrogantly live every day our life without realizing our true person. So we suffer, we feel burdened, we feel lonely, we feel desperate, we feel helpless. It is because we do not know our great status, that is the real self, or the God, or the Holy Spirit that dwells within ourselves. Yeah? Know you not that you are the temple of God, and the Holy Spirit dwells within you. Also, lo and behold, the kingdom of God is within you. And Buddha say, Buddha is in your heart. It means Buddha is within yourself. Now if the Buddha is within yourself, then we are the Buddha. What else? There's no one else in here. Only Buddha lives in here. Then we are the Buddha. Is that not so? If no one else lives inside, only the Spirit of God, the Kingdom of God, then we are the Kingdom of God. Then we are God. It's very logical, even without enlightenment. We cannot argue about this. So the next step is to find this Kingdom of God, to find this power of the Almighty, which is hidden within ourselves. Now I have found it. I might inform you. If you want to find it, then I will offer you my service, free of any condition. My question is, when you attain enlightenment, what happens to the personality? You mean if you are a very angry person, will you become more calm, yeah? It happens, yeah. It affects our personality more to perfection, yes. I have been meditating for some time. For, meditate, for, yes. For a number of years. Yeah. And then I reach a stage that I can identify myself, a, a small universe within myself, to the big universe yes. in, in, in the world. You right? become great. You have expanded. Uh, I feel that I'm a small universe, but I can see the change, motions, and everything is changed in the world. And also I identify my own change in my own system, my body, my thinking, my wisdom, and so on and so forth. And I'm having a trouble with my uh, diet. Yeah. yeah, I've been on a vegetarian diet for a long time. But reached to a stage that 
somehow I still cannot take a vegetarian diet. In other words, from time to time I do throw up from from eating vegetables. I have problem with my stomach. I guess it's because、oh, of the body cannot, experience changes.、Uh, after the experience, you cannot digest the vegetable anymore. Yes. All right, and then I only feel comfortable when I eat fruit.、Mm. You can only eat fruit. But、no. I'm at the same time that I'm concerned about my health. All right. Yes. Yes.、Uh, I don't have a teacher that who can really guide me、mm. from different stages.、Yes. I'm sort of try and error to to learn it on my own, read books and practice. Understand? Yeah. So as a result of that, and、um, I'm more or less go back and forth. I'm one way. I'm worried about my diet, so I continue eating different kind of vegetables to give me all the nutritions. At the same time, my body、uh, rejecting those diet. The、only thing I feel a little comfortable with is eating fruit, and also I quit eating rice for a long time. And from time to time, I do eat some pasta, noodles. And and I don't know from this point on whether I should、uh, stick to what I my body tells me to just go on a、uh, fruit diet, or I should more concern about my、uh, nutrition value to my body to keep this body、uh, healthy in order to continue. Practicing what I firmly believe is right. I have sympathy with you, but I have not、uh, heard of any cases like this before. Yeah, but now it's very easy. If you are on fruit diet, how about nuts? I do eat nuts because、oh. of that. I、okay. I eat more nuts, different kind of nuts, and okay, nuts and、uh, if peanuts. You can, if you can eat nuts and fruit, it is all right. Because we've been brought up a certain way, I'm quick from eating meat to vegetable. I thought that I'm on the right track, but somehow, somehow you want to eat meat again? I don't eat. Oh no, no, I don't、so、want to eat. So、meat. you have no choice now. I have no choice. I can't go back to eating meat. <laughs> so、right? there's no need to worry. You eat fruit and nut. That will be okay.、Uh, look like you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> If I'm not okay, I won't make it to see you tonight. <laughs> you're okay. You're okay. You can write to me if you're not okay. <laughs> Thank you. You see, I eat hardly much. Sometimes many weeks pass by, and I eat one noodle soup or something a day, and carry on working like I do now and traveling up and down the world. I have no no problem, not need to worry. Whatever your body needs, that's all right. That is God's direction, right? Nevertheless, better for you to have a teacher. <laughs> Find one that's suitable for you, in case you reach a higher stage later. You are lost. All the time. <laughs> Why didn't you find a teacher? Lecture. I understand. Okay. All right. And I wish you will find one in the very near future. Yeah, and settle down your business. <laughs> okay. I have two questions. My first question is: When your Kundalini is awakened, would that、uh, give you enlightenment? Not necessary. Not necessary.、Hmm? You can also be enlightened by awakening the Kundalini, which is、uh, called、yeah. like a servant here. It means the servant power, yeah,、uh, behind、uh, on the bottom of your back. That you can be enlightened to some extent, but not the whole, yeah. And without that, without disturbing that servant power, you can be enlightened even to the great extent. And my next question is: When you become enlightened, do you be in a state of bliss? Yes and no. <laughs> yes, because you are in bliss. No, because the world is still suffering. You feel what your human failure feels. You have not become wooden or stone image.、Hmm? So, all right. Okay. And my last question. Yes.、Uh, so, the path to become enlightened instant is:、uh, you have to practice meditation. Yes, it is one of the precondition. Yeah, no, it's not before enlightenment. You have to practice meditation. If you do it by yourself, then you have to practice meditation. Yes, for many years. Sometimes then suddenly you get some light. But if you have a a great a competent teacher, it can make you enlightened in one minute. Yeah, opening your power. Yes, all right. But afterward, you have to nourish this enlightenment and make it grow. Therefore, you need also some quiet times every day. Say,、uh, let's put away one tenth of our time to prepare for our 
heavenly road. For example, we put uh, some of our money away so that when we are old or sick, we can use them. Hmm? Now we use some of our time, one-tenth of our time, to be in a quiet communion with the higher power, to charge ourselves up again in order to uh, be of better service and uh, be of more wisdom. Hmm? Okay? That's what meditation means. You have the power to uh, awaken the Kundalini and uh, the disciple to help him get in that state of consciousness of that enlightenment? I do not need to awaken your Kundalini to give you enlightenment. I do not need to do anything. You will just be enlightened like that. Is that all right? It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> to be awakened uh, by the Kundalini power sometimes is very painful. You know that? Yes. So I want to avoid the pain and torture for my disciple. There's no need for that. Yeah? There are many doors. Hmm? Okay. Good evening. What are your thoughts on a possible solution for our overpopulation problem and the fact that we are in the midst of an ecological crisis which will affect us all? Mm. Or if you see any solution? Yeah, I see many solutions. Such as? I would like to hear one. Yes, or to get enlightenment. Then see into the problems with different eyes and find a better solution. If we only do things with blind eyes and deaf ears, then of course we make mistakes. We are blind and deaf because we only can see from here up to there. We see nothing of the whole universe. We are deaf because we only hear the neighbor's language. <laughs> we cannot hear anything from heaven and hell. So we cannot communicate with the whole. We are communicating only with a limited personality and we can only learn from so limited number of people, yeah? Whereby we could enlarge our wisdom by communicating, learning from greater, wiser beings by opening our heavenly eyes, opening our ears, yeah? All right? That's what enlightenment is. Yes. One more question, if you don't mind. Um, on the list here, I noticed adultery. Yes. I was wondering what your definition of adultery is. Could you be a little more specific? Well, you have one wife, that's enough, no? Or you want two? If you we believe there's, there's uh, one love you should share. You can't share that with more than one. Yes. Once is enough trouble. Mm? <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, when we practice, we want to be in as less trouble as possible. Right. Now, if you have one wife and you don't think you have enough trouble already, well, then welcome. So as we go through all our lives, we only have one love. As you go through another life, you find enough. another love. Enough. As you practice more, you will be in more communion with the higher love, and you do not need any more such kind of uh, bondage. Yeah? Even your own wife, you will leave behind. I don't mean leave behind, but not attached. Yeah? You not become jealous over your lover, and not become possessive, and not thinking she is my one and only. You will be more in a higher love, yeah? You will love all beings in a pure sense of love, yeah? Thank you. Mm. See, if you have so many wives, you waste your energy and emotion and time. You must save it for practicing, <laughs> yeah? Apart from economical struggle, <laughs> yeah, if you have a wife, maybe you have to take care of her emotional and, and economical need, huh? If she takes care of you, then you are obliged to take care of her. We have to have two ways in order to preserve a love. What I mean is you have to have the motto, uh, take and give, in order for a love, a real love to survive. And now if it's discarded in too many directions, then you don't have very trusting relationship and not a stable atmosphere. In this kind of unstable atmosphere, you cannot practice and you cannot reach a higher level that you desire to do. It's too chaotic for you. It's too much stress. And we already have enough stress with, <laughs> with everyday life, with one lover, with all the emotional needs and give and take and all the jealousy and all the stress, all the worry together. 
Yeah? So it's very difficult to live with many at one time. All right? I would just like to thank you for enlightening my mind. It's my first experience, and uh, I'm glad that you're going to Panama City. I was born in Panama. We are Christians, and I'm glad that there is a unity between Christianity, from what you have said, and a unification of all great uh, religions of the world. And I think that with this type of idea, we can have true peace in our world. Thank you again for coming. You're welcome. That's right. I have not come to destroy, to fulfill. Hmm? I do not wish to destroy any faith or religious tradition. I just want to beautify it more and fulfill it to its complete extent, yeah? to perfection. Yes, I have the same question. Uh, the gentleman said that. I'm happy you was Catholic. I'm a Catholic. So uh, I'm here because I like to learn from you. That's why I'm, I'm happy you say that we can keep our own religions. And, but I like to know the Christian, the Buddha, we can they have the connection? My first question. You can see first from the ethical standpoint, yeah? The Buddha taught the people all the ethical conduct. The Christ, Jesus, also taught people to be good and love their enemy, love their neighbor, be compassion. Is it not the same? Yes, same, it's the same. Right. right. The second standpoint is spiritual standpoint. The down to earth man standpoint is the ethical to keep the social in order. Okay. It doesn't mean if you keep the precept, you can become a saint. It's not so easy. To keep in a, a good conduct and to become a saint is another different matter. Now the second viewpoint you can compare is that the spiritual standpoint. Now Jesus Christ emphasized that you have to seek the kingdom of God. You have to go back to Father. Huh? by practicing charity, etc., and meditate. He himself meditate. At least you can see from the example of his last days in the desert, 40 days. Yeah? He mm -hmm. contemplate, retreat. What did he do? You, you cannot think that he walk around all day and recite the Bible, no? <laughs> that he know already. He himself is the Bible. So what he did is he meditate. Now everybody knows. Now if someone meditate 40 days in the desert, that means he had meditating experience before. He can't just all of a sudden go into the desert and sit for 40 days without any idea whatsoever and any practice. You get crazy, yeah? So that means Jesus has been meditating all the time, and that was his last charging push in order to go out to give it to the world. Similarly, Buddha also meditated 40 days something under the Bodhi tree, and also we know that before that, he meditated many years. You're okay, so both of them doing the same thing. Huh? Now, Jesus says you have to look for the kingdom of God, and Buddha says you have to find your Buddha nature. What's the difference between the cookie and, you know, the apple pies and my cookie? I told you already. Yeah? That's right. Different country, they use different terms for God. Mm -hmm. yeah? Also, sometimes the enlightened master, they want to break through the prejudice and the preconceived ideas to give people some fresh start and not clinging to the old one-hour conception in order to break through, to start anew. So they have some shock to the people's nervous system in order they wake up. Just like when somebody fainted or uh, hysterical, you slap him in the face, no? Yeah? It doesn't mean you are violent, just mm -hmm. to help that person. Or somebody fainted, you, you pour cold water in his face to wake him up. Mm -hmm. That's the meaning for some of the dramatic statement that the Zen master or those people who say, no God, only you yourself, only wisdom, only the master, only me, something like that, mm -hmm. just to shock people out of slugginess. So from the spiritual standpoint, they are both saying the same thing. Now about the experience after practicing spiritual discipline is that they both mention about the light, the many mansions in heaven. Buddha also talk about the light, and the heavenly sound, and the many Buddha's land. Many mention is many Buddha's land, all right? So, uh, one more question. Just uh, because uh, both emphasize the meditation. Now, uh, Catholic, uh, we start to learn the meditation from a uh, Buddha's way, because Catholic uh, meditation, we use some Bible, use the words to learn reading, then we start to use the word meditation. And on the Buddha's way, the meditation empty your mind. 
how we can use this way medication to reach God. Mm. Okay, this is a misunderstanding of the word of the Zen masters. Mm -hmm. Now, you see, once we are enlightened, we know things different <laughs> from the ordinary understanding. Before, I also did not understand what it means by empty your mind, and what is the kingdom of God, and what's Buddha nature, and all this term is so big for me. <laughs> After enlightenment, everything is like children game. Now, the Catholic tradition, some have meditation. You know that? Christianity have many retreat centers, many hideaway, what we call secret orders, which no one can enter even. What they do, they contemplate, they pray, they meditate. What is meditation? I tell you. After prayer, we just sit still for a while, or maybe worshiping God for long, our, our arms aching from telling the beat and our knees sometimes tired, so they might just drop down and sit there or kneel there in utter silence to have a rest. And at that time, God's instruction will come. This is his meditation. We have to be quiet in order to listen. We always talk and God had no chance to tell us. So the prayer is the talk, the demand, and the meditation is the listening. So most people just keep praying all the time, praying all the time, always noisy, always talking. God has no chance to tell him what to do. <laughs> no, no wonder their prayers are an answer. God has no, no opportunity. <laughs> so meditation is a must from logical standpoint. Whether you're Buddhist, Christian, Muslim, whatever, if you cannot have time to listen to God, then God can never be communicated. If, even if you talk to a friend, you telephone, and you must talk and then you must listen. If, even if you ask me, you must first ask and then now you must be quiet. So I have a chance to tell you, no? So how we treat God? even worse than a friend. We keep talking all the time and give him no chance. <laughs> yeah, so meditation is a time of quiet listening. That's all there is. And God will come. Yeah? Okay, thank you very much. Right? Yeah. Hi, thank you for your talk. I wanted to know, uh, it was said that Jesus Christ performed miracles, and when someone achieves enlightenment, do they then have the power to perform miracles, and do such things exist in our world? Yes, such things exist. Once we tap into our inner wisdom, everything can manifest. But you should remember that Christ performed miracles in secret. He hated to let people know. Yeah? Now many other times, he cured the lepers and cured the sick people. He wait until no one there and go and tell that person to get up and get healed. And now when he saw people come after that, he immediately disappeared. You remember? He hide himself. He did not want to let people see. And he also told him, the patient, not to tell to other people. But that person come out and told everything. So, even if the master has miracle, they seldom openly use it to attract the attention of the mass. They only want to attract the sincere seekers for the kingdom of God. Why, I tell you? Because if you are after miracle only, then miracle is all you will have, not the kingdom of God. But if you are after the kingdom of God, you seek the kingdom of God, and all the things shall be added unto you. You will have miracle and all things. Therefore, most masters uh, avoid, attract people by miracles for fear they will pay their attention only to that part of the God's power and forget the whole. Yeah? Hmm. I do have one more question about yeah. uh, suffering in this world. Um, an illness, and what can we do to help our loved ones who are suffering from illness? You tell them to pray. Pray to God, turn to God, or Buddhas, whomever they believe, you tell them to pray. Pray to their own inner God, inner Buddha. Pray sincerely. Yeah? What if they have a mental illness? Mental illness, well, then we have to wait until that person is awakened from his own slumber. Hmm? This is due to what he has done in the previous life. He might have driven someone into craziness. He may have given some drug or something, make some person puzzle head. Yeah? So he has to reap his own karma 
consequence in this life. Once he has served his sentence, yeah, he will come back all right. God gives people many chances, not just one life, to correct our own mistake and to lead to our perfection. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Simple truths are very difficult for me. I study books and read things years and years ago, and I think I understand it then. And things come up, you know, even days ago, weeks ago, where I thought I understood an idea. And you, you know, think life you know. is difficult. Yeah. I've read that hundreds of times, yeah. thousands of times, and I just understand it a month ago or something. And I think about these, and I fight. I look hard over here, and then I just learn something over here. Um, but knowing these things is important for me to make life better for myself and others. Um, what can you tell me to better at learning these things? First, seek the kingdom of God. Get enlightenment. That's what it means. Yeah. Once you have wisdom, everything is clear. No need me to tell you. You know what to do. I'm trying to reach the point where I can give my own answers, but I don't know how to get there. Well, because the bank, the treasure, the room that holds all the answers are blocked, are locked. If you want, I may help you to open it. And every day you get some new answer. Yeah, just like your money is locked away in a safe box, and <laughs> you forgot the key. <laughs> okay, I bring the key. And after that, you will know many things which you don't know before. No need to ask anyone. All the answers lay within your own power. Yeah, that is what we call the kingdom of God, or the wisdom of the Buddha inside. Yeah. I still I hear what you say, and but I I know I don't understand. All right, like this. Now you cannot find all the answers, right? Right. What should you do, and why should things happen like this? It is because we are not yet enlightened enough. We do not have enough wisdom. We only have a little intelligence. I told you five percent of the brain power. <laughs> Now, if you want to know more things, then you should be more enlightened. It's just like when you want to be more educated, then you should go to school, yeah, and learn from books. Now, if you want to have more of the invisible power and wisdom. And you should learn within yourself. You yourselves are the teacher, but you forgot that. So, uh, my purpose or duty is to help you to awaken that inner teacher, or God within ourselves, or the Buddha, inborn Buddha, and then He will teach you many things, answer all your questions. All right. Hmm? Thank you.